and we are going to jump right in. Now, this is a presentation that's a little different from what we have done historically. I know over the past six, seven, eight months, what we have done is we've taken a topic, we have talked about that topic in depth for about 45 minutes on a webinar, have questions at the end. Uh, recently, I realized as a company, as ECI Development, we have a lot going on. We're located all throughout Central America. We have different projects, multiple projects in each country. And so what I thought may be helpful, since a lot of you have various interests, maybe you're looking at multiple countries, or maybe you're looking at multiple opportunities within one country. So I wanted to present you with information in one location about the latest and greatest happenings within ECI Development. Now, now, with that being said, I want to preface this presentation with the fact that there are about 100 slides. So I was going through with Joe and Betsy, my two, uh, my two co-hosts here, and we were trying to really just nail down and go through and give you the best and most important information during the session. Now, there are going to be questions. I can guarantee that there's going to be a lot of information and there's going to be information that you don't see on there, but you want to know. Um, and understand we're probably going to go, be going through about, I think it's about 10, 12 different opportunities. And we're going to only be spending a couple of minutes for each opportunity. So with that being said, um, if you have any questions during the presentation, if you want more information afterwards, you see a specific opportunity that you would like us to expand upon, or you'd like specific floor plans or, or all-inclusive pricing or whatever that case may be, jot down this email address, info at ecidevelopment.com info at ecidevelopment.com. I know I have it on a couple of the slides that'll be coming up here. I apologize, I don't have it on this primary one, but use that email address for the specific details that you would like to request. Obviously in the Q&A box, we can answer your questions there. But if you wanna see again, like those site maps, the performas, the specific availability and inventory, that is where you're going to be uh, to be reaching out to to get those specific details. So hello again, everybody. Welcome. My name is Rachel Jensen. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ECI Development. Uh, today I call Belize home. I'm originally from New York and have been spending time in Latin America since 2012. My first trip down to Nicaragua was in 2010 on a medical mission trip. I absolutely fell in love with the country, the culture, the people, everything there, and realized I wanted to change my course of life at that time, 2012. I ended up moving to Nicaragua full time. I was there for a while back and forth between Belize and Nicaragua and Panama, uh, and eventually decided to call Belize home. I'm originally from New York, obtained my green card in Panama about four or five years ago, and just really enjoying this overseas life. But with me today, I know that you all hear from me quite often, so I wanted to bring in a couple of, of other faces, a couple of other hosts with me. Uh, Joe, why don't you give us an introduction about yourself and tell us a little sure. bit more about you and how you got interested in overseas? Sure. So hi, everyone. I apologize. My video for some reason is not <clears throat> working, and I tried to share it in, in Zoom for some reason is saying that the host has disabled it. So Rachel or Ivan, if oh, let us, there's somehow let us to get look it. into that, I apologize. Yeah, no worries. And in the meantime, I'll just keep speaking. But like Rachel said, my name is Joe Nagel and I'm a property consultant here at ECI Development. I'm actually about 10 feet from Rachel and Betsy, but um, you know, to try to um, reduce, you know, the the internet issues, we we wanted to separate the room, some in a different room. But you know, I, I've been coming to Belize for wow, well, I mean, it's been you know, my whole life, people always ask me, oh, how long have you been going there? And I'm, I'm like 24 years. And they're like, well, how old are you? I'm 24 years old. So I've been coming here my whole life. I actually consider it, you know, really, if not my home, my second home, I have citizenship here. And you know, I started working for Eastside Development in, in January of this past year. So you know, I love traveling. And, and when I graduated last year, I really didn't want to, you know, take a typical nine to five job where I'm sitting at a white desk all day long, like so many of my internships. So I really wanted to get out, see the world. I, like I said, I love traveling. And um, you know, this was a great opportunity. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Belize um, last week. I was actually in Nicaragua at our property, Grand Pacifica. So, you know, I love traveling and, and it checked a lot of my boxes. And, you know, especially my job, a lot of it's just on my computer. And, um, you know, as long as I have a good Wi-Fi signal, I can pretty much do everything I need to do. So, um, yeah, it's been a great opportunity. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about some of our opportunities today alongside uh, Rachel and Betsy. All right, perfect. Thank you, Joe. And you know, I'm going to suggest maybe why don't you bring your chair out here and join us. Um, I just, Ivan, he's our, our IT guy. He's there on the line with us. Ivan, he just said that it was one of the 
the okay. flaws there with with uh, Zoom right now, we're not able to go back and change it. But why don't you come out here with us, Joe, sure. and then we'll just we'll just share this space out here. But also with us, we have Betsy Rosenland. And Betsy, why don't you uh, give us a little intro about yourself? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, as Rachel said, my name is Betsy Rosenland. I am a property consultant with ECI. I've been living in Belize for four years and 11 months tomorrow. Um, oh yeah, I became a resident of Panama at the beginning of this year. Um, I've been coming down to Latin America since 1998. Uh, wow. It was my first trip down. Um, and I, I fell in love with the region, knew that I eventually wanted to end up here, got my degree in Spanish and international relations, and thankfully uh, was connected with Rachel and have been here ever since. Awesome. Well, gosh, Betsy, I didn't realize it was so long. Time really is flying. All right. It looks like Joe just got out here and joined us, so we're going to readjust in a second. But what I would like to do is give a, a quick recap. So many of you know that we are ECI Development. We're based throughout multiple countries within Latin America. Uh, we're gonna be highlighting Belize, uh, Panama, and Nicaragua today in the presentation. You guys get a little bit closer. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be highlighting those three countries in the presentation today. But before we get started, we do have a special guest with us today, Mike Cobb. Mike is the CEO of ECI Development. And Mike, I know that we don't have any formal slides for you, but why don't you just give everybody who's listening uh, an update as to who you are, why you started this organization, and what your real goal was when you were creating opportunities in all of these countries and different opportunities within all of these countries. And sorry, you're not going to be able to do your video either, but uh, yep. but I know that you'll be able to tell us a great story. <laughs> Indeed. Well, Rachel, uh, thank you for bringing this together, and I want to thank all the folks that are joining us this evening. Uh, it, it, the you know the, the response has been unbelievable. Uh, and, you know, and it's it's uh, it's it's interesting because you know when we started this company 25 years ago now, we you know we we saw what we thought was the future of people living in you know buying property overseas, probably most of them you know for vacation purposes, some for investment, and then ultimately some number of the folks for retirement. And the thing that we understood very early on was a lesson that we picked up from the Dell Webb company who developed the Sun City retirement communities around the United States. And that was is that, you know, he started out in Arizona and basically he understood very quickly that not everybody would want to live in the desert of Arizona. So he built communities all over the United States and even in Canada because different strokes for different folks. And so as we got started many years ago now, two and a half decades ago, we understood that that while we started in Belize, Belize might not be the right thing for all of our, you know, all of our clients and all the folks that we bump into at conferences and we talk with, because some people want to live on the Pacific Ocean and some people want to live in the mountains and some people want to have a, a vineyard type of experience with their with their property overseas. And so we, we very quickly added some property in Nicaragua. It's actually a very big property. Our Grand Pacifica community is three and a half miles of beach, about 2,500 acres. We came in, we built a golf course, homes, condominiums, uh, and really have built a beautiful little small town by the ocean where before there was nothing. It was a, it was a cattle ranch, a very large cattle ranch. So that, that was our second uh, community. The first was Belize, Nicaragua, then Costa Rica and now in Panama as well. And so we, we have our first Highlands property. We have our first property in the mountains where it's cool most of the year. I think you'll talk more about this as well. But, um, but the idea, the big concept picture was, you know, if we can provide community, neighborhoods, friends, things to do, uh, ways that people can engage and, and really make a new friend set, a new peer set when they move overseas, we will be delivering the highest forms of quality of life, which is our friends and our relationships. And, and yes, the property is important. Yes, the home's important. But in the end, it's our neighbors and our friends and our neighborhood, the community that really translates into a very high quality of life uh, for us. And, and so we, we've, been, uh, we've been doing this now again for, for 24, 25 years and we're in our 25th year of business. And, and, and we've developed these communities and it's wonderful to see people really enjoying uh, what their new life has become, and, and it is exciting. And, and the one thing that, that I would say is you know, the thing that we maybe anticipated a little bit but didn't really predict so well was the number of property owners 
who would be from the local countries, uh, whether it's uh, you know, our Nicaraguan clients in Nicaragua, Panamanians in Panama, um, you know, that, that there's a real acceptance on the part of, of folks who live in the country to want to be a part of our neighborhoods and our communities as well. And, and that, that's been very rewarding. It's a big honor to have people who are Nicaraguan decide that they want to own a home at our Grand Pacifica community, for example. Uh, the other thing that's happening is we're seeing more and more young people, and I say young meaning in their you know, 20s even, late 20s and 30s, beginning to own properties overseas. The tiny home community development that you've really put a lot of work into, Rachel, is, is, is really on the front edge of that. And, and bringing affordability to a millennial generation, for example, with properties under $100,000. This, this, is, this is unheard of in the region, but, but fully featured, fully amenitized. Uh, and, and so again, delivering neighborhoods and communities for that demographic as well. It's very, very exciting. And the last piece of the puzzle I just want to touch on is, you know, we really, again, were thinking early on that these would be retirement destinations, and, and they are. We have, we have folks, full-time residents and snowbirds who are in and out, you know, six months out of the year who are truly retired in that full definition of the world, uh, word. But what we're seeing now is that people with being able to work remotely and work virtually, people in their 40s and 50s are starting to look at why do I have to wait till I retire to move to Belize? Like I love to fly fish, I love to dive, I love to snorkel, I love to stand up paddleboard. You know, I like all of those things, whatever it is. And, and I wanna start doing them every weekend now. So people are buying properties in Belize and Panama and Costa Rica and other places because they don't have to wait until they retire to enjoy the lifestyle. So this is, this is, a, this is actually, one of the most exciting transformations I've seen in my 25 years of working is this, this decoupling of work and work location, allowing people the freedom to move overseas much earlier in life and enjoy those lifestyle benefits, the things that we love doing as hobbies and recreation or, or simply just nicer weather for many people in the North and in Canada, right? Moving somewhere warm is delightfully wonderful. And the sooner we can do it, you know, probably the happier we can be. And, and this transformation of society really uh, has, has allowed people the freedom to explore that idea. And some of the folks who have been exploring it are already taking action and doing it. Uh, and, and it's just so exciting to see. It's very rewarding. Uh, again, we're, we're so honored that we're able to serve folks and, and be able to, to give people the kind of neighborhoods and community and quality life experience that they truly want and deserve. Uh, and we're able to do that. So uh, Rachel, uh, you know, keep up the good work. You're, you and your team are doing a phenomenal job of helping people become happily involved and owners of, of wonderful properties overseas. And um, it's just tremendous to watch it happen. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Mike, so much for joining us. Uh, you and, and, and the team have really done an incredible job at building out PCI development and being able to offer people options depending on where it is that they want to be. All right, folks, so grab your pens and paper because we're going to just dive right in. And as I mentioned earlier on, I know a few of you just joined us, this is going to be like speed dating. We are going, I've never, I've actually never done speed dating, but this is what I would assume speed dating would feel like, is you're going to get a lot of information quickly. And so just jot down some of the highlights and do a quick recap at the end of each country. And then if there's more information that you want specifically, then just send us an email or send us a message in the Q&A section, and we'll make sure that our team gets you those details. In addition to that, if you want to have a, if you have a specific question, you can ask that in the Q&A section of the control panel. All right, so let's get started. We're going to jump right into Belize. So Belize is a small country. It's about the size of Massachusetts. Population today is about 370,000. But the reason why Belize is such a popular country is because of the location. It has close proximity to North America. We're gonna go back to the map over here. Uh, you can see we're about 200 miles south of Cancun. And this little country really started to gain popularity in the 80s, 70s and 80s with divers and fishermen, uh, specifically Ambergris Key, which is where, where we are located because the reef, we look right out the window here, we can see the, the reef breaking. So it's been a very popular destination for a, that adventure traveler really for a while. There are a lot of mom and pop type accommodations, 
But over the years, over about the, the last 10, 12 years, Belize has really started to emerge as this country that more mainstream travelers were going to, more people were starting to discover it. Even today, a lot of people are like, oh, where's Belize at? And so hopefully you're able to educate them there. But the big reasons why Belize is so popular, and I'm only gonna highlight a few of the top reasons here. Number one is that proximity to North America. It's easy enough to get to, it's about two hours and 15 minutes from Houston, uh, two hours from Miami, two and a half, three hours from Atlanta. There are more direct flights coming in from uh, LAX, for example, Newark, Charlotte, Chicago. So it's getting easier to get down here. In addition to that, uh, English is the official language. So when you're looking at real estate or you're looking to relocate somewhere or own real estate somewhere, knowing the language and being comfortable with that language is definitely key. Uh, the third point I'm going to just highlight there is the increase in tourism. Uh, this is extremely important for those of you who are looking at investment properties. You want to be going where the people are going. So there are a few different districts, a few different areas within Belize. Uh, the top one and the most popular by far is San Pedro Ambergris Key. This is the little island. You can see her on the right side of the screen where you see that Marriott logo. This little island right here is the, uh, is the, the largest center for tourism. 70%, 70% of the tourism revenue that's generated from this country comes from Ambergris Key. So this is where we're going to focus on today is Ambergris Key. This is where you find a majority of the expats, you find a majority of the tourists going to, uh, the primary reasons being that we do parallel the reef right there. It's beautiful, it's relaxing, we get around by golf cart. It's a very charming sort of country. So we're gonna just jump right into the opportunities. So the first one here is the Belize Marriott Residences and Resort. Uh, this is a project that we're very excited about. We are bringing a hard brand hotel to Amber Grisky. Uh, we've been working with Marriott for quite a few years now and are really excited to be able to offer a four, four and a half star property here on the island within close proximity to town and a beautiful beachfront, a beautiful stretch of beach. But what really makes this project so unique are a few factors. One of them is we're going to be able to cater to, towards larger groups. Right now at this point, it's very difficult to get a group over 40, 50 people here on the island. There's just not really the space for it. So think about uh, conventions, dive conventions, for example, large conferences. I know some of you I've met at a conference before. So imagine being able to have that conference on Amber Grisky, this awesome Caribbean destination. And we're really gonna be catering to this mainstream group of tourists, people that really haven't been coming to this country for a while because there wasn't this branded option. And when you're looking at places to invest, you typically want to go where the brands are going. You want to go where more direct flights are being added. You know the direct uh, flights, you know the airlines and the hotels have spent a tremendous amount of time, resources, money, looking at new locations and destinations for them. So having a Marriott on Amber Risk Key is uh, I think going to be an incredible opportunity for this island. It's gonna generate tons of jobs, but it's also gonna really introduce Belize to the map in a more significant way than we've seen previously. Having the big hotel brands, having the number one hotel brand in the world on an island like this, it truly is incredible. So in total, in this, in this community, there are 202 keys, so 202 rooms. Uh, we, as the developer, are retaining 60% of the condos. We're letting everybody choose their, their condo first, and then we're going to retain the others. Uh, at this point, 68, so out of that 202, we were offering 68, and 42 of those have been claimed. There are different models and different sizes, studios up to three bedrooms just depending which market and which demographic you wanna serve. But we've been seeing this influx of, of honeymooners and, and young families who are coming and couples and divers who are coming and just looking for a very comfortable place that they can go to. And maybe they have tons of Marriott points they wanna be using and now they're able to do so. So we're really excited about this opportunity here. I think it's going to be a significant change for Ambergris. I think it's gonna be significant for the marketplace generally. Uh, there are different models, just depending, again, on your interest, uh, but we have a smaller studio starting at about 319. The most popular is a the Princess Residence Studio. It's essentially a hotel room, but that is the market you're serving when you own at the Marriott, oops, I'm going the wrong way there. <laughs> Sorry, guys, at the Marriott Residences. Uh, the Queen, which is a one bedroom, one bath, you start about 500,000, uh, work up to about 650. The King Residence, two bed, two bath, two not bath. Uh, these range from about 760 to about 900. 
And then the Windsor, this is really the grandest of them. It's three bedroom, three and a half bath. And these here start about a million and go up to about 1.2. Um, so again, you can just see that this is a really quick recap. If you're looking to serve the rental market on the island, you're looking for an upscale property, I would highly recommend looking at the Marriott opportunities. Uh, we have all the different floor plans available. We'll be able to send those over to you, but we just need to hear from you about what your interests are. All right, we're going to just jump right into the next one. So the next one is the fleet building. This is a gardens opportunity on Amber Grisky. This is actually just located about two and a half, three blocks away from the Marriott. And the Grand Bayman Gardens was recently branded a Best Western. So if you are looking for entry pricing into the, the Belize market here, you understand the power of a brand, but maybe you're not prepared to spend $400,000 on a beachfront condo, but you still want to serve the market then I would highly recommend looking at the fleet building here. Uh, the fleet is located at the northern part of the property. To date, we have 54 condos that are up and delivered, uh, are currently seeing renters, the anchor building, Captain Dolphin Explorer, those are all up and operating. And the fleet building here, the northern part of the property is actually currently under construction. We just started construction on it uh, last month and it's been exciting to see the progress so far, but when we were looking at hotel brands, what we identified is with the Best Western property, with the Grand Bayman property, is that these, the, the, the Best Western brand fit the Grand Bayman property really quite well. The Grand Bayman property is not supposed to be a four, four and a half star luxury property. It's supposed to serve the people who are coming in who don't want to be spending $350 to $500 a night on accommodations. They're here to put their, put their money in the water or check out restaurants or excursions still want nice, clean, comfortable accommodations, but don't necessarily want to be spending those premiums. And so this is a really great opportunity for people who are looking more um, in the lower, the lower range for a brand new product. So the opportunity that we have within the building that's currently under construction right now, their sailboat studios, again, really geared towards the rental market. When you own a sailboat studio, you are owning to serve the rental market. Uh, I know we've had a couple of people like, oh, I could, I could live in that. And if you can, that's great. They're about 300 square feet plus balcony space, um, but it does have the owner lock up there, the opportunity for the washer dryer, the kitchenette, everything you really expect when you are staying uh, at the property. And one of the benefits I do wanna to mention, two of the benefits here, really they, they work well together, is that this is the seventh largest hotel brand in the world. Marriott is number one, Best Western is number seven. Uh, it's the third largest in North America, but this is significant because if you're thinking about ownership in the Marriott or Best Western from the rental perspective, then this is significant. This is truly significant because these hotel operators, their only job is to put heads on beds. It's to put people in these rooms to provide occupancy. So I would highly recommend one of these two opportunities if your primary goal is return on investment. We do have a webinar special for our fleet studios. As I mentioned, this building is currently under construction um, and we're offering $10,000 off for anybody who wants to hear more about it and anybody who decides that this opportunity is right for them. Just send us a message there. Let us know if you would like to learn more about the fleet and we can certainly uh, get those details over to you. All right, so now we're gonna just jump <laughs> right into the next one. You'll see that we're gonna just do a little swap a room over here. So don't mind us as we're just getting the, uh, the, uh, the office yep. situated. We're good. All right, so our next opportunity in Belize is our tiny eco smart homes, which we are super excited about uh, because these are unlike anything that is currently available in Belize. Um, these are over the water, tiny homes. Um, if you think of places like Fiji or the Maldives, you've seen um, over the water homes, um, which are just really neat, um, especially from a vacationer perspective. Um, it's, it's a very cool experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these homes are located, um, as you'll see on the map, uh, across the water from San Pedro town. It's about a five minute boat ride. Uh, so it gives you the feeling that you're on a private island without actually being on one and without the prices of a private island. Um, so we are, um, oops. Yeah, really excited. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. So, yeah, this is a really exciting one. And I just want to mention up here, sorry, you're going to see me pop in and out. <laughs> I was like a little gopher. But you'll see here um, on the screen, on the site map, too, you see in reference to where these, these communities are. You see the Marriott 
at the bottom part of the screen that's about half a mile south of town, a couple blocks off beach is where the Best Western is. And then as Bet's, Bet's mentioned, the Test Village is located right across the bay on West Ambergris. But yeah, cl close to the action. It's one of my favorite locations <laughs> within the island. Uh, yeah, and you know, uh, within that community, um, there will ultimately be uh, community space where gathering space, um, community pool, uh, places for people to come together, um, mingle with one another, uh, great place for digital nomads if you're coming down, um, work three months here, go uh, off somewhere else, enjoy it uh, without really committing to a large space. It's, it's very efficient use of space, um, which you'll see. Um, we have three different models. Actually, we have four different models, don't we? Four for Ava, three for Tess. Okay. Yep. Three, <laughs> three, three different models here. Um, our most popular have been the studio and the one bedroom. Um, and that they've really made a, a very efficient use of the space. Um, most of the homes are just about 300 square feet, um, but you've got, you've got a kitchen, you've got a separate sleeping space, uh, you have a small living room area, and then you have great outdoor space either um, on the top deck as a veranda uh, or the back porch there looking over. Uh, these homes have a lot of neat features. Um, they're eco-friendly, like we said, so they are on a hybrid system, meaning you're partially connected to the grid, um, but you, we do also have solar. So during the day, you're collecting solar power using that solar energy. And then at night, if need be, uh, you can tap into the electric system here. And there is also an option to add smart features if you're interested in that um, smart thermostats, uh, which is great, especially as an owner. Uh, if you're putting it in the rental market, you can control the thermostat so that your renters aren't uh, turning your, your tiny home into an igloo, mm -hmm. freezing you out and jacking up your uh, electric bills. Um, so we do have one uh, op one studio left um, in phase one. Uh, currently going for 169.9. Definitely reach out to us if you are interested in tiny home ownership. Uh, we do have a waiting list going for phase two. A um, lot of folks on that list. So if you're interested in that, let us know as soon as possible so that we can get you on that list. Um, and hopefully we can make this work for you. Um, as you'll see here, there's lots of great outdoor space that we're going to incorporate. Very natural, organic looking, uh, truly blend in and give you that island uh, here's the available space is number 18. It, again, it is the studio model, which is probably the most popular one that we've had. Yep. All right, so let's just give you a quick recap. So you can see we're just going right through these here. <laughs> So quickly as recap, we have the Marriott opportunities. We have a mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms breaking ground in 2021, uh, opening by about 2023. In addition to that, we have the best Western fleet opportunities. So there you have the studios really serving that rental market uh, for folks who are maybe more economical and don't want to spend four, five, six hundred dollars a night on a room. Uh, this is the webinar special that you see here in 98.6. That's a ten thousand dollars off of the current price. We did break ground on it, and we are going to be opening at the end of next year. And then last but not least, as Betsy mentioned, Test Village, the tiny homes, there are their 20 bungalows in phase one. We have one studio remaining at this point, and, and Betsy really did a great job highlighting. This is a very unique opportunity for Belize. Uh, we're one of the only developments that have been granted special permission to build over the water, including those. And when you add in those eco features, which is great, you have the hybrid system, we have the reverse osmosis for your water system. You're really integrating ways to be ecologically friendly and, and green. I think that that's very important in today's world. And so we are breaking ground on that. We have actually started this month. We uh, have the stakes in the ground and we'll be opening that, that community up November 1. That's to mention we have phase two. We are currently working on the ECPs, the environmental clearances and the site map for that phase. So we're still a few, a good few months away, about six, seven months away from doing an official launch there. But I would say if you, have the opportunity to own one of the tiny homes, own the last tiny home. I think it's one of the best models is the studio. If you have that opportunity, I would highly recommend taking advantage of it. Uh, in our next phase, we have 40 homes, 20 will only be over the water, only 20 will be over the water. The next 20 will be on land and we have a, a waiting list out the door already. And so because this is such a unique concept and I do personally believe that a lot of people are going to be wanting to stay in these homes or even you know, for a short period of time or extended period of time or live there, 
um, you're really able to get in to a unique community before um, before it sells out. So I would highly recommend that. But again, if you want the performa, the financing details, the site map, the floor plans, any of those sort of details, shoot us an email. There's that email address I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, info at ECI Development. And jot that down on your pen and paper, your pen and paper if you haven't already, info at ecidevelopment.com. And you can just put in the subject line the, the, the property that you're interested in and what specifically you'd like to see. And we will certainly get those details over to you. All right, so we're gonna just jump, oh, before we jump right in, um, we have a, a lot of webinars and resources for you uh, surrounding these countries and the opportunities. We've done our webinars about each of the opportunities and our webinars about the country specifically for you to just get more familiar with them. If you would like any of that, just shoot us an email there, info at ecidevelopment.com. We'll get those details to you. Um, again, it's, there's a lot of information, a lot of details, and this will help you learn more about the projects specifically, and also from there, learn about the opportunities more specifically. All right, so I'm going to pass Nicaragua off to Joe. Joe is just in Nicaragua, so he's going to give us uh, the, the latest and greatest of, of what's going on yes. and more about the country. Hey, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get into Nicaragua, and I, I, before I start, I just want to say, you know, I talk to a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis about Nicaragua and its past history. And, you know, the past is the past. I really encourage you to remove those, you know, preconceived notions of Nicaragua and take a trip down there. You know, join us on a discovery tour. You know, you got to see it for yourself. I was just there. And I mean, it's a beautiful country. It's, it's very safe. And uh, you will talk a little bit about that. But I just want to say that before getting mm -hmm. started. But, you know, here are a couple of reasons why Nicaragua, like Rachel mentioned, we've gone into um, you know, our webinars about this stuff specifically. So if you'd like any more of that, you know, please request that at the info at ecidevelopment.com email. Um, but yeah, it's a very safe country, you know, contrary to popular belief. Um, you know, people are very friendly. You know, I always joke around when people ask about you know, how are the locals, you know, only when you're in these countries and you're seeing other tourists, they're the ones that are usually the ones not saying good morning or hello <laughs> or things like that. So, you know, people are very um, friendly. Another thing is, you know, extremely low cost of living. You know, Costa Rica is a very popular place, but, you know, when you go to Costa Rica, it's, it's a proven market, you know, things are expensive there and, you know, Nicaragua, it's, it's unreal to see how, you know, inexpensive things are, you know, we have a lot of uh, owners at Grand Pacifica that have full time living maids and, you know, for about $200 a month. So, I mean, you know, that's unheard of in the States. I, I know that would be, <laughs> you know, a, a very, um, you know, underpaying job, but in Nicaragua, it's a great paying job and it, it is really nice to have that quality of life. So, you know, there's plenty of other reasons, but you know, for time purposes, we won't get into them just yet. But like I said, you know, here's kind of a, a great, you know, um, concept to look at is the investment curve that we've put together. You have the Pacific of Costa Rica, you know, that's a very popular tourist destination, great rental market. But you can see, I mean, that does have great cash flow, but you know, it's a pretty expensive place to be. Um, and so Nicaragua, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, as, as people realize that it's a great place, it's safe and all these things, you know, we'll move up the investment curve. So it's a very great emerging market, especially from an investment perspective with the appreciation. And, you know, as more people go there, you know, they'll realize that and it'll, it'll move up. I mean, Belize, you can see where that is. And, and Belize is really just kind of hitting its peak too. So great opportunities from an investment perspective as well. So now we'll get into Grand Pacifica and that is our property um, here in Nicaragua. To give you an idea on a map, it's, it's where that star is. And Managua is the capital city. And so it's the closest um, resort to, um, closest beachfront resort to Managua. So we do get a lot of local um, you know, traffic from the weekends of people coming out because they want to get get out of the city and, and experience you know, the beauty. So you know, our property there is three and a half miles of beachfront um, right on the Pacific. Um, like I said, it's one of the, it's the closest you know, resort to uh, Managua and the airport. So um, that's great. You know, we also have a golf course. So if you're an avid golfer, I'm not too great myself. But, you know, there's there's a great hobby that you can pick up while you're, I guess I shouldn't say hobby, it's a great sport you can pick up while you're there. So, uh, but you can see how beautiful the sunsets are, you know, those aren't filtered images, those are just the beauty that you get on that Pacific side where, where the sun sets. So, so yeah, it's a great community for things, golfing, surfing, some of the greatest surf breaks are right on property. There's actually two, one is the meat grinders and then at uh, Asachio, it's a great surf um, break for those who are just learning. Um, to surf so you're not getting pummeled by the waves. So uh, I'm going to start off by kind of continuing with what Betsy was talking about is our tiny home communities. So we do have one in Nicaragua at our property as well at Grand Pacifica and it's called Eco Village Asachio. Like I said, it's right on the Asachio beach. 
Um, so it's great if you're looking for a surf destination. But you know, it'll be an eco village like like the tiny homes in Belize. The one difference here is that these will have batteries, so you know they'll be a lot more off grid than the ones in um, in Belize. But yeah, here's so here's the site map. You can see the homes. There's actually a, a mirror like image of another 50 homes on the other side, but those have already all been reserved. So um, you know, great same features like we talked about with tests. Um, you're going to have the options for um, having the smart technology. They'll be off grid. You know, really great sustainable things like green roofs, gray water recycling. Um, so, you know, you're not just wasting a lot of those things. And then from an investment perspective, you know, as an investor, you really can mitigate, uh, minimize those expenses by having, you know, the solar and stuff like that. So you're not um, burning through the AC, which can get pretty pricey in this mm -hmm. part of the world when it's, when it's warm every day. Of the year. So, um, but green roof, gray water recycling off grid. So it's really cute and great community for sustainable living. Um, like Rachel mentioned, we do have four different models, the Laura, Halcone, and um, you can see them here. And like I said, we have brochures that go into more specifics for floor plans and things like that. But just to give you an idea, um, they start just over 90,000. And then for the two bedroom, the Macaw, they get up to 130,000 roughly. But, um, you know, a lot of people do say, hey, these are really tiny. But, you know, when you're living in this part of the world, you don't need four bathrooms and, you know, six bedrooms and two living rooms. You know, a lot of your, your day to day is going surfing, you know, going horseback riding, things like that. You're outside all day. So you really just need that interior space for you know things like sleeping and, and maybe relaxing, getting some AC. So um, <laughs> that's just one thing to note, but we, you know, obviously Grandpa, we do have other properties and we'll get into that. But here are some um, renderings of what the interior will be like, and a lot of sustainable aspects to it. Also here are the views, like I said, beautiful sunsets. Um, yeah, it, it is great. Um, and then we'll get into Casita Village, which is another property of Rachel. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll jump in here. So, bit. and and just to highlight what, what Joe mentioned is with the the AVA, which is our eco friendly community within Grand Pacifica. Uh, it's a new community. We at this point, you'll see my updates at the end of the, the Nicaragua section. But uh, at this point, we've cleared the land, staked the land, and are really excited to be building those homes. They'll be ready towards the middle of next year. But those are really unique homes for people who just are looking for a smaller footprint. And also people who want to serve the rental market at Grand Pacifica. Uh, today at Grand Pacifica, we have about 23 condominiums that are beachfront. We're uh, going to be offering 12 more. But we really don't have that single family home community that is right there by the beach or it's just steps away from the beach. And so being able to serve the market of renters, which are surfers, we know that we have a lot of surfers there. We have two of the best surf breaks, as Joe mentioned. Uh, in addition to that, we have a lot of wellness retreat groups that come down to Grand Pacifica. It has, the, we have the yoga platform. We have the area for people to get, get and find that inner peace. And so we do have a lot of those groups who are coming down, as Betsy mentioned as well earlier, as the digital nomad groups. We have a lot of people, and I've been starting to see it here in Belize, where they realize they're able to work from their computer. They're hopping on a plane and coming down to these countries. This couple I met just a couple of weeks ago, they are younger, they're about mid thirties. They both are able to work from their computer. They're here until at least February. And then they're gonna figure out where their next destination is. And you are able to, people are able to do that now. So the eco-friendly community is a is definitely a location that we are expecting to see those digital nomads, of course, the surfers, the wellness retreat groups, and also people who just want a, a lower cost of living and to reduce their carbon footprint. Now, when we released the AVA community, we had a lot of inquiries that asked for two bedrooms or people said that they were going to be coming down with their kids or they wanted an extra space for an office or for when their parents can visit or whatever that case may be. And so I wanted to introduce you Casita Village. This is a community that's located about a 10 minute walk from the beach within the Grand Pacifica uh, community overall. And just to take a step back. Grand Pacifica is the larger property. It's about 2,500 acres. And within Grand Pacifica, we have different neighborhoods. And within each neighborhood, you're going to find there's a different feel. So the eco village that, that Joe talked about, that is an off the grid community. We have these smaller homes. Casita Village, these are about a thousand square feet. You have two beds, you have the option of one bath or two baths. And so these are the, the next size up. These are for the, the homes that people need just a little bit more space, but they don't want a tremendous amount of space. And for those of you who are looking for something that's a little bit larger than those, those tiny homes, then this could be a great solution for you. And any of these homes can be off the grid as well if you want them to be, uh, but that is totally up to you. So if there are homes, you can add, uh, there are home sites, you can add a casita to it, that's right, casita village means smaller home. 
but they're compact and they're really efficient. Uh, as I mentioned before, they're only about a 10 minute walk from the beach and they are fully serviced if you choose to be uh, connected to the grid there. There are a couple of different models within the Casita Village community that you're able to choose from. You're able to customize your own floor plan. You can create your own floor plan just as long as it, it's in within the setbacks. But this is a great space, again, for people who, who don't need the thousands of square foot of space, but just want to have something comfortable, have an office, have an extra bedroom for a child or a parent or, or office or whatever you really want that to look like. Uh, so there, I'm just going to go back on a couple more slides. So you can see that there's a home site available for about 40000 Then if you would like the home site with the casita on it, it's about 140000 Really affordable for the, the construction, the size, the quality of the homes. But you have the choice to decide if you want to own the home plus the, casita, plus the lot or if you would just like the lot at this point. All right, so we're going to jump into the next one here, which is Las Perlas. We mentioned the condominiums earlier. So within Grand Pacifica, we have a condominium community, a beachfront condominium community called Las Perlas. At this point, there are about 22, 23 condos that are up and running. They've been operating for the last 10, 12 years. And these condos have performed very well in the rental market because at this point, it's the only beachfront uh, rentals that we have available. Some people live in their, their condo full time and others most tend to put it into the rental program. And so at Grand Pacifica, we have a lot of weddings. We have a lot of groups that come out. We have a lot of day travelers, as Joe mentioned, from Managua and overnight travelers, weekend travelers from Managua. So we have people who are coming out and want to be able to see that beautiful sunset that Joe mentioned. So they're looking for somewhere either on the beach or close to the beach. And so what we realize is there's this huge market right now for more condominiums. So according, if you look at the, the rendering over here on the left hand side, that building that's already constructed, the second building, if you can follow my cursor, is currently under construction. It's just about done in a couple more months. And then we have slated more space for upcoming uh, condos. And so we have our third building, which we are just releasing now for the very, very first time uh, in, in, uh, for this building specifically, but it's our very first time reaching out to the marketplace. What we've realized is that people are looking for that beachfront opportunity. Uh, they're either looking studios, one bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and we're going to go through that floor plan in a second. But within within this village, within the Las Perlas Oceanfront Village, there is already a pool over here. There is a restaurant, which you can see right over here on site. There is a palapa. There is one of the best surf breaks in, in Latin America. is called the Meat Grinders. This is really for the experienced surfers, but it's located right out here in front of the Las Perlas building. So it's an awesome location to be watching surfers. Uh, there's also um, a, just a, a chairs. I mean, just a really beautiful uh, environment. And in addition to that, you have the sunset right there in front of the building. So this is Pacific Front. You have views from all of the condos and they're starting at $129,000. So you can see we have, I'm gonna just walk through the floor plans here, but I don't wanna get too much in detail because we have a ton more information, but we have one bedrooms, studios with connecting doors, and then it mirrors, so you have the studios and the one bedrooms. So all of these can be connecting. So you ultimately would have a four bedroom, but it just depends on what you would be looking for as an owner. So studio started about 130,000. And, and please bear in mind, these are beachfront, waterfront condos in a developed community. You go to Grand Pacifica and TripAdvisor, you can you know, see the pictures of what people are posting. We've been in the rental market for 10, 12 years at this point. We understand what the market is. We understand what people are looking for. So this is a great option. These are studio style condos. Uh, they're about 300 square feet, a little bit large. They're larger for the, the one bedroom, of course. But again, just depending on you, what you're looking for, what market you want to serve. Uh, again, for the details, you can just put Messiah in the subject line. That's the name of this building. And we can get you those details. All right, we have two more neighborhoods within Grand Pacifica. I'm gonna just buzz right through them. Um, this is San Diego Viejo. San Diego Viejo was the first community we really started at Grand Pacifica. It is, there are about 204 home lots and within those home lots, people are able to custom design their homes and really build their dream home. Now for people who are looking to put their home in the rental market, I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, ownership of a lot at, at San Diego Viejo. This is really geared towards people who wanna build their dream home or spend time here, whether for part of the year or all of the year or whatever it is that you're thinking about. But 204 home sites in total, 185 of those are owned at this point, And we have over 80 of those home lots that do have homes, custom homes on it. 
home lots here start under $52,000. Uh, and then just depending on the location and the size, they go up. But this is really a beautiful community. It's a beautiful neighborhood. There are sidewalks, there's manicured landscaping. Uh, you're able to walk by your neighbor's house and wave to folks as you're walking by. But here, it's just a really unique location. So if you're thinking about that, that custom home, and you know maybe you're looking in the range of 1,500 square feet to 4,000 square feet, then I would recommend San Diego Viejo for you. So what's really nice about San Diego Viejo is the location. I'm going to just take a quick a slide back here. Uh, if you look at the bottom part of the screen, you can see at the bottom part of the site map, that's where the Las Perlas condos are. So you are close to the pool and the restaurant that we mentioned in the other slide. But if you like being close to everything, it's close to the beach and the clubhouse and the restaurant and the golf course, then this could be the right community for you. If you're looking for some place that's already established, there are neighbors, there are people living there full time. You're really wanting to build something 1800 to 4,500 square feet, you know, maybe a little bit smaller, or a little bit larger. This is really the right place for you. So San Diego Viejo home lots, 204 in total, 185 are currently owned and we have about 80 residences. Um, and here are just some of the examples of, of homes that are there in San Diego Viejo already. It just really depends on what you're looking for. We have, I don't know, about 25, 30 different floor plans if you need some inspiration. But if you've been thinking about what you want your, your Pacific home to look like, this could be it. All right, we're gonna just dive quickly into Santa Barbara. And this is the right location for you within Grand Pacifica if you're looking for an estate home. So when we look at Santa Barbara, you're gonna see that they're larger lots. They are gonna be a little bit more expensive. They're beachfront, some are beachfront, some have ocean view, but it really is geared towards those who are thinking about building an estate sort of a home or homes for them, their heirs, their loved ones, whatever it is that they want to do with it. Uh, but here the lots started at about 110,000. They work up to about 450,000, just depending on the size and the location within the property. But what's really unique about this location uh, is that it is by the Osachio Beach, which Joe mentioned a little bit earlier with Ava. And this is one of the prime swimming beaches. So in total, we have three and a half miles of beachfront at Grand Pacifica. It's a, a beautiful location. Joe mentioned the 2,500 acres. It's a large piece of property. And so not all of the beachfront is created equally. You know, you have in front of Las Perlas, you have the, the meat grinders waves. You have you know, really intense expert waves. So you're not really gonna wanna be going swimming out there. If you're looking for a place to be going swimming, you're looking for calming water, you're looking for a large stretch of sand that you can enjoy, uh, that's really in front of Santa Barbara, also in front of Ava, the tiny home communities that Joe mentioned. So it's in a really beautiful location within the Grand Pacifica community. But quickly taking a look at the site map here, uh, you can see that they are larger lots compared to uh, what we saw in San Diego Viejo. They range from about half an acre to almost two acres, whereas the other lots are more quarter acres and even less than that. So again, just depends on your ultimate goal, how much land you want, how big of a home you want, and then you really decide on that community there. So who this community is right for, if you're envisioning owning a family estate on the beach, uh, we have a couple of owners that we've talked to within Santa Barbara who are planning to build a couple of homes there for them and for their kids and, and really have this place for them. If you are somebody who enjoys having some more space, you enjoy privacy, a little bit more privacy, this could be the right place for you because they are the larger home lots. And then of course, if you're looking for that larger home, then this would probably be the right option for you versus a Casita Village or an Ava home that's about 350 square feet. So a quick recap for you. Oh, there's some more pictures. These are some of the owner pictures uh, that were, were sent in the group chat. I mean, it's, it's really just, just stunning. All right, so um, I'm not gonna read all of this to you, but you know that we have the tiny homes, the Ava tiny homes, they start under 92,000. Casita Village are the larger thousand square foot homes. They're about 140,000 with the home and the lot, Las Perlas Oceanfront Village. And this is the ideal location for uh, people who want condos. They have studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, and you could ultimately make it a three or four bedroom. Uh, San Diego Viejo and Santa Barbara are home lots. All right, and then you know what to do, info at ecidevelopment.com if you would like a copy of the Performa financing details site map, floor plans, et cetera. All right, so, and just like we have for Belize, we have the Nicaragua 101 recording and the handbook as well. If you wanna hear more information, as Joe mentioned about the country generally, the NICO 101 recording webinar is awesome and the handbook is a great one for those who, who like to read.
All right, so we're gonna just jump right into Panama. I know we're getting close here. I'm just looking at the time. Okay, we got like just you know, guys, just like buzz right through these these next these next 15, 20 slides. Uh, no, we, we want to make sure we have some time for your questions as well. But uh, we have two more opportunities that we're going to inform you about. And Joe, why don't you fill us in a little bit more about Panama? Yeah, so we'll we'll buzz through the um, little briefing about Panama so we can get into the properties. But um, you know, going back to the investment curve that I talked about a little bit earlier, you can see Panama is much higher on the investment curve. Um, it has a very established market with some good cash flow. Um, if you've ever seen pictures of Panama City itself, you know, the first time I was there, um, I couldn't believe it. I actually told my dad, I was like, wow, this looks just like New York City. I mean, they have skyscrapers and things like that where, you know, if you're here in Belize, you know, the tallest building is five stories. So, you know, it's a lot more developed and it really does have a, a great tourist market as well as, as some other great things for the economy. So, you know, why Panama, you know, easy access worldwide, they're a hub. So if you're looking to you know, get into South America, I mean, you can pretty much get there, you know, within a flight or two. So it's a pretty easy access, um, great economy. You know, they have, um, unlike you know some of these other countries that rely heavily on tourism, they have the um, the Panama Canal, which you know it's 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 a license to print money. I mean, it's it's great for the economy. So um, it's a very safe country. Like I said, developed infrastructure. You can see um, if you follow the cursor, you can see the skyline. I mean, it's very developed. It could be you know South Beach, Miami, or something like that. And um, you know, a lot of people that I talk to always ask about you know healthcare and things like that. I mean, they have world class healthcare. They have uh, what's called a JCI hospital and it's uh, international standard and um, so they yeah they have that right in Panama City so you know it's it's a lot more advanced and developed than than you might think but like I said if you want to learn more about this in specifics you know ask us uh, info at ECI development for our Panama 101 webinar where we cover that in a lot more detail so we're getting into Freedom Village and like Mike talked about a while ago um, earlier in the hour you know a lot of our clients are interested in the beaches the Caribbean the Pacific but you know, there are a lot of people that, that don't want to be on the beach. They want that tropical highlands feel where it's, you know, springtime all year round. So you know, we recently um, um, acquired a property that we are calling Freedom Village. And that's in, uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective on the right side, it's Panama City. And then on the left side, you can see the two stars. That's David and Boquete. And those are two of the bigger um, cities right around where, where our property is. It's that little red dot. So that's um, right in the highlands there about uh, midway in between both of those of both of those towns so um, here is a overview of the master plan that's not of the entire property that's just a small segment but you know this is where we'll be doing the tiny homes here if you see um, number 18 and then here is where the condominium complex will be um, and then we'll also have land for you know if you're looking to build a custom home you'll have they'll have lots as well but um, artesian markets orchard things like that so um, but yeah, it's, it's just a different option than, than some people that, that might not want you know, to be on the water on, on the ocean. So um, it's a great opportunity for those. Um, you can see some of the photos here, you know, great resources such as the, the river there, um, as well as orange groves. So um, that's also a big thing that you know, we, we see a lot of interest in. So we, it's great that the property already has those kind of resources. Um, here is zoomed in on our tiny homes. So similar to Belize and Nicaragua and Panama will also be doing tiny homes and um, you can see there's already been a good bit of them that have been sold so a lot of interest there and um, you know, just to kind of breeze through the, the different models <laughs> you can see one of the cooler things that we're doing with the Panama tiny homes specifically is if, if you've been following us you might know um, and Betsy's going to talk about this here in a minute about our teak opportunities um, so you can see actually we'll be sourcing a lot of the teak to 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 integrate that into these tiny homes so you know, um, it'll be really cool and, and bring that sustainability element into things. But uh, so going back, hibiscus model, you know, we don't have everything finalized with pricing, but just to give you an estimate, you know, the larger one will roughly be around 600 square feet in this model, um, Helconia model, which will also be around 149,000. And then, you know, we do have that smaller model, which is around 300 square feet, the orchid model, um, and that would be around 120,000. So, you know, it depends on, you know, what interests you, but we like to give some different options, but you can see the the beautiful renderings there of the teak. And, and I think that'll be a really cool thing uh, to integrate that. You know, not a lot of the developments in this region integrate, you know, it's usually concrete and stuff like, and, and it will be concrete, but to add that that element of teak mm -hmm. is, is gonna be really cool, I think. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna get into the teak and Betsy's gonna talk more about that. So let me just shift this over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so in addition to all of our different properties that you just heard about, uh, we do have a really neat agricultural opportunity 
um, and that is ownership of teak in both Panama and in Nicaragua. Um, one of the reasons that people like owning teak is that it, it allows you to give back to mother nature. Uh, there is a global demand and there is not a huge global supply. Um, and it also provides above average returns and is a relatively safe um, investment due to the fact that it has a real value on like stocks and things which can fluctuate, um, you know, on an hourly basis. So go into a bit more. Um, going back to the demand side, the two largest consumers of teak are India and China. Um, and as you can see here, uh, they have the largest populations and they will most likely continue have, to have the largest populations um, you know, for the next hundred years or so. So we don't expect that the demand will go down um, so long as these countries um, keep increasing in population. Um, another great thing uh, about teak, like Dr. Steve Sugarroot said, is tr teak or trees uh, grow through recessions, they grow through wars, they grow through stock and real estate crashes, they grow through everything. They give you built in investment growth that isn't guaranteed with a stock. Um, so yeah, going back to what we said, it's a, it's a relatively safe, as far as investments go, it's a relatively safe investment opportunity um, that also allows you to give back and to provide for generations to come. Oops. Difficulties, uh, for example, during the uh, last recession in 2008 to 2012, our trees continue to grow. They don't know what's going on around them. They don't know that COVID's going on right now across the world. Uh, so they just continue to grow and we let mother nature uh, do her thing and just keep growing those trees, which is uh, really nice. It's a very hands-off opportunity. You don't need to be uh, super involved unless you really want to. And in which case I'm sure our forestry management company would love your help to come down and uh, measure thin. the trees. That'll be your top. <laughs> measure trees, prune trees, uh, clear brush. Um, folks are, uh, who are already investing in timber are people like John Malone, Ted Turner, endowment funds like Northwestern, Harvard. Um, that's just to name a few. They're investing huge numbers, um, as you can see here, uh, huge numbers in teak that aren't you know, necessarily what you or I have. Um, which is why we created this opportunity so that regular folks uh, can invest in timber and, and create that generational wealth stewardship with real assets. You own the land, you own the trees on the land. Um, we have teak at different ages, uh, everything from zero to 15. So you can stagger your payments if you do a combination of the teak options. And we have a professional management company, like I said, that manages it so you don't have to do anything. Uh, we do periodically take tours down to the farm. This was our most recent one in January. We had a great group, got to see the farm. Uh, we have, uh, so here's a brief overview of our different teak opportunities. We have uh, in Nicaragua at Grand Pacifica, we have the one-year-old teak, um, just under $7,500 per parcel, quarter acre parcel. Uh, we also have zero year teak in both Panama and Nicaragua just under 7,000. And then in Panama, we have the 15 year old teak, um, which is just under $17,000 there. Awesome. So again, you see Whirlwind, you guys, I think a lot of you know, we do hour long <laughs> presentations for each of these. So this is really the whirlwind of them. But just as a quick recap in Panama, we have the Freedom Village Tiny Homes. Uh, we will be doing a, a hard launch of that or a more official launch in early 2021. Many of you know, we did a soft launch on it. Uh, we are taking reservation deposits for those homes that you saw marked as reserve. And if anybody decides they don't want to move forward, we'll, we'll send you your money back. But it's a good way to get uh, ownership of a home if it is a place that maybe you already know and that you feel comfortable and want to invest in. And in addition to that, we have the two models there. Uh, so break ground in the middle of next year and then completion date for the tiny homes middle of 2022. And as Joe mentioned, we're going to be having the single family home lots for your custom home and condominiums too. And that will be, be to be announced in a future presentation. And then as Betsy mentioned, the Teague opportunity, this is I think one of my favorite opportunities within ECI, even though it's so different, it is still ownership of land. As Betsy mentioned, you get title to it, but it's agricultural. So if you're thinking a little bit outside the box, you're thinking for a longer term period, there are thinnings, there are you know, the big harvest at age 25. 
And just depending on what it is you're looking to accomplish and when, you may see that a newborn is perfect for generational wealth stewardship. You know, maybe you have a new kid or, or grandkid that you would like to gift something like this too. And we've seen a lot of gifting happening over this holiday season where you, you'll, you'll own the trees and, or you'll, you'll pick up, you'll purchase the trees, you'll title in the name of your kids or grandkids. And then they have this asset that they don't even need to worry about. It's all t done turnkey. And then they have it for generations and years to come. So uh, again, let us know if anything on this chart makes sense for you and we can get to those details. And of course we have the Panama 101 recording and handbook uh, for you. If you'd like more information about the country of Panama, generally just let us know there. So just a couple of considerations for you. I see that we're a little bit past the hour. So we're gonna just quickly uh, quickly end here and then go through your questions is we do accept cryptocurrency. Uh, in addition to that, we do have financing available for all of our properties. So we do have typically up to 80% financing available. Uh, let us know which property you're interested in. We can give you the details. And then we do have our team who are here to really help you with turnkey solutions residency and getting a green card or a passport in another country is something we get asked about a lot. And so we've paired up a lot of our opportunities with residencies in each of these countries. Let us know if that is something that is of interest to you and we'll make sure we send you those details. Even if you have no idea if you're interested in residency, but you're looking to really jumpstart your plan B and protect your most important asset, I would highly recommend just asking us about it. And you know, all of us here, I'm looking at us here, Joe is a citizen of Belize, I'm a resident of Panama, but she's going through her residency process in Panama. We, we both have our work permits here. So there's, there's a lot of considerations and we're just here to help you through that as you have any questions on your mind. Now the last bonus thing I wanted to mention is if you are an accredited investor and you're looking for an opportunity that's really unique, I would recommend taking a look at ownership of stock within our parent company, ECI Development. As Mike mentioned earlier, ECI has been around for about 25 years. And typically when developers are giving a presentation like this, and like we just did, we talk about the opportunity to own real estate. If you're looking for a pre-IPO opportunity, I would recommend asking about our stock options within ECI development. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this with you. We're going to go through this in a live Q&A on Thursday. Mike Cobb, our CEO, and I are going to do a live Q&A on Thursday. And I would just recommend that you reach out to us if you would like the link to register for that. It's going to be 5 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Info at ecidevelopment.com would be happy to send you the link. Do note you need to be an accredited investor if you're from the U.S. Accredited investor is defined as a single who has an income of $200,000 or more, a couple and you have an income of $300,000 or more, and or you have a net worth of a million dollars excluding your primary residence. Uh, if you're not from the U.S., you can ignore all that. You can join us if you'd like to get shares in the company, but uh, just email us and we'll send you that Zoom link. So we are covering a lot of opportunities right now. We're going to be sending you a global property resource kit, which consolidates a lot of the country information, gives you details that uh, you really need to be considering when you're buying property overseas. And if you're able to join us in Nicaragua next month, our team is going to be in, in down there for a discovery tour January 14th to 18th. Uh, that'll be in Nicaragua. Let us know. We can get you the details. And then we're going to be doing one in February, the 24th to the 28th in Panama. Uh, just email us if you would like the details for that. So this is the time now where we're going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, I know that we have gone a, a little bit over and we've had a lot of details in here. I would love to be able to send you information that's pertinent, pertinent to you. I understand everybody has different goals and objectives and we're all looking to accomplish something a little bit differently, uh, different, but I will be able to, uh, to, to send you those details. And hello, Marcus. Marcus says, Rachel and Betsy, hello, <laughs> gals. All right, so JC asks here, do you assist people in the transition to relocate and become residents in Belize? Yes, we can certainly help you with that. There are a few different residencies in Belize. So guys, come a little closer. There are a couple of, there are a couple of different residency programs in Belize. Sorry, Joe, you're a little tall for the screen here. Um, a couple of different residency programs in Belize, and, and we can certainly help you with that, just depending on whichever residency uh, makes the most sense for you. One of the newest residencies that came out in Belize is you invest $250,000 or more into the country for an investment property. 
and then you can get your investor residency. Uh, we've seen people do that with the Marriott property, some who paired up the tiny home with the fleet. So there are different ways you're able to do that. And then do you know of any properties where you're able to rent to own during transition? Uh, you know, I don't really know of too many places that do rent to own. We could probably figure out something in our, our Best Western property, but we can certainly talk about that. And I'm glad to hear that you are looking to transition to Belize and you're now in the process. That's awesome. Well, you have some friends here when you make it down, JC. Uh, we can certainly help you, but just send us a message and we can go through your personalized questions. Um, and Amy, I see that you said you want more information. You might be interested in getting in on the ground floor. Uh, let us know which opportunity it is that you're interested in <laughs> and we'll be able to get those details to you, Amy. Uh, the next question I see here is from an anonymous attendee. And it says, how many phases for Tass Village Belize do you envision? So great question. Um, our land over there and the water allows for 40 over the water tiny homes. We don't have any more water to build over once mm -hmm. we get the 40 homes up, uh, but there will be 20 homes that will be on land. So first phase is 20 homes. And we have 19 of those that are owned, one that is currently available within phase two, which will be launched at some point next year. We'll have 20 homes there that are over the water and 20 that are on land, so a total of 40. And then the next phase, the third phase is actually going to be condominiums because we just don't have any more water to build over. And so as Betsy mentioned, this is really a unique opportunity because in Belize, you're not allowed to build over the water structures that you live in. We were able to get permits for it because our land is private land, it was surveyed and it's not necessarily in the marine reserve, it's, it's a tidal lake. So we were able to get that ex exemption there. So that's why I think if, if anybody on the line has that opportunity to take advantage of that one remaining home, I would highly recommend it uh, just because it is, um, there is a limited number of homes that we will be building. Uh, Leslie, I'm awesome. Leslie said, so hard to choose which opportunity, but I'm glad you were able to join mm -hmm. us. Uh, the next question I see here is what is the next step to make a reservation on a tiny home? Well, I'm loving all this tiny home taxi right now. <laughs> so uh, just reach out to us. Let us know what community you're interested in. We are accepting reservations for all of the property. It's $999. You complete a reservation form. We send you the paperwork. You have seven business days to go through the paperwork. If you don't want to move forward, we'll refund you uh, your $999 deposit. If you're planning on coming down for any of the discovery tours, then we'll be able to give you more time between coming down and completing the paperwork, but we would, we'd love for you to become a part of the community if it makes sense for you. Yes, Mike, thank you. Good question. Are you doing anything on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica? We are at this point, we haven't been developing it, but it's a really amazing stretch of land uh, there on the Caribbean side. It's close to Limon, the Limon port in this area. There's a lot of agricultural land, bananas, for example. You find a lot of banana plantations there. And uh, we have property, we have about a thousand acres and it's really ideal for the Southern Florida sort of climate. So that's where you get there, Southern Florida sort of feel and, and vibe. And so this is one of the areas, the only areas within the region uh, that has only ever seen one recorded hurricane in history ever on the Caribbean, which is unbelievable. So it's really the ideal community for a marina. And we are in the process of um, you know, taking ECI public, that'll be over the next three, four years. And then once that's accomplished, really starting to build out the marina side of Costa Rica. Um, anonymous attendee is asking here, what is the average rental occupancy rate for Belize and Nicaragua properties? Uh, you know, I wanna just make this disclaimer um, that, that COVID has really put a wrench in a lot of the rental numbers. I've had people who are like, all right, well, give me the rental numbers in the past two or three months. The rental numbers in this part of the world, I mean, anywhere that's tourism based has been you know, virtually zero. So just understand that, but what we are able to do is provide you with historic numbers, uh, what we've seen previously. I personally think it's going to be a good two, two to three year buildup as we get we resume with tourism. Uh, we, we've certainly been seeing more people on the island at least. So that's been good. We love seeing tourism come back, but I think really for it to resume to what it was, it will be about another another two years, really. Uh, but historically in Belize, it's been about 53%. Uh, at our Nicaragua property, it's a little bit higher than that uh, because we are the, the closest beach community to Managua. We have the two, two of the best surf breaks. And something to really bear in mind for the Grand Pacifica property, and what made me think about this is I will be thinking, I was, think, I was talking to somebody earlier about what country has the, 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 the shortest slow season. And the answer to that is Nicaragua. And the reason being that high season, like peak season in Nicaragua is typically the end of November through about May. 
And then June, July, August, which are usually slow times of the year in the country because it's typically more rainy. They're also the best surf times in the country. So people are coming down, occupying the condos during what historically and usually is slow season, but they're coming down to catch the best surf breaks and to make sure that they have those, those waves that, especially if they're coming in from California are virtually empty. The water's 83 degrees year round. So it's, um, it's really quite interesting. All right, I'm seeing just a lot of questions here. So what I'm gonna do is just take uh, the next three and then what we'll do, because I, I know we're over the time and I just wanna be respectful <laughs> of everyone's time. Um, we'll go through the next three and then for those that we were not able to get in touch with, our team will be in touch with you uh, directly. So Benjamin is asking ballpark distance between Grand Pacific and teak plantations in Nicaragua. Great question, Benjamin. So the, the teak plantations are located on the Grand Pacifica site. Uh, we had an agronomist come in to do a soil sample and they've allocated about 250 acres that are ideal for, glow, for growing teak. So it's actually there within Grand Pacifica. Uh, if you come visit, we'll take horses and, and go see the property. Joe just did that the other day. <laughs> I'm not a horseback rider by any means, and um, it was a fun experience. Think, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it took uh, 20 minutes by horseback, so I'm not sure what that equates to in this. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. All right. And then Helena asked, do all requirements re or do all investments require you to be an accredited investor? Uh, the answer to that is no, just the, the shares of ECI development. Um, because it, it's share ownership, so you do need to be an accredited investor if you are from the United States. And then the next question here is, Elizabeth, do most of your properties have ownership fees? Uh, yes, we do have homeowners association fees. I know that's not a topic a lot of people like to talk about, but uh, the reality is we as a company recently took over a building on the southern part of the island here where the HOA went defunct and the building was painted seven different colors. This is not a joke, seven different colors. The pool, which at one point was operating, was empty. There were rotten um, uh, floorboards around the pool, so people could have easily fallen through. And so HOA fees, while it's not a popular topic, it is something that you want to actually make sure they do have, because if you are proud of your home, you want to make sure the community in which you own continues to have value, especially you think about it from a resale perspective, too. You want to make sure your property at some point has resale value. So there are homeowners fees within all of our communities. It is, we're gonna charge you whatever it costs to maintain the property. And we do have breakdowns of that if, if you wanna see it, but um, we, we do you know, take a lot of pride in what we're developing and our owners take a lot of pride in what they own. So we just wanna make sure that uh, we're covering the cost to maintain it. All right, okay, I'm just seeing a lot of questions here. Um, a teak, I see anonymous attendee. I don't know who that is, but you're asking about the Friendly Nations visa. Um, just send us a message so we can get back to that Friendly Nations visa for everyone in Panama. There are rumors that it is going to uh, change. We haven't had anything confirmed by the government of Panama at this point. Um, they've been saying it's going to change for the past four years. So to be honest with you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if they actually did change it at some point in 2021. But if you are thinking about getting residency in Panama, I would highly recommend you start the process sooner rather than later. Our attorney is working with people directly to make sure that they're getting started on the process so they're grandfathered in. But I, guys, I, I, I'm just looking at the questions here. We can probably go for another couple of hours. But uh, what I'm going to ask you to do if we did not get to your question is just reach out to us directly. Let us know what you're interested in, how we can help you. You can always schedule a time. You're just seeing two of the, the amazing people on our team here. Uh, we have a great team, about seven or eight of our property consultants who have been to these countries, who have done this, who are personally living uh, in, in these locations and gone through that residency and own real estate and you know, gone through that process. So reach out to us. We're happy to, to talk to you about your specific situation and scenario. I'm really happy that you all stayed on for another 20 minutes with us as we went through questions, <laughs> uh, but it is being recorded. I saw a couple of you said you're happy it's being recorded. I know there's a lot of details. But we're going to get the, the recording over to you. Let us know what your specific interests are. And again, thank you, everybody, for, for staying on this long. Thank you, thank Betsy you. and Joe. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a really, really great evening. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye-bye.